Okay, um, yes. my name, all right, thanks. My name is Gurmeet. Um, I'll be moderating today's talk. This is our fourth webinar by Faculty of Pharmacy. So I will just briefly introduce our speaker today, Dr. Associate Professor Dr. Said Adnan Ali Shah. Dr. Said Adnan graduated from the University of Karachi, Pakistan with a Master of Science degree in Chemistry in the year 2000. He received his PhD in Structural Organic Chemistry from ICCBS, University of Karachi, Pakistan in 2005. He was a postdoctoral fellow at the Institute of Analytical and Radiochemistry, University of Innsbruck in Austria. Dr. Said Adnan joined the Department of Pharmacology and Chemistry, Faculty of Pharmacy, UITM, as a senior lecturer in 2007. So it's been 13 years, Dr. Said Adnan. Yes. He has published numerous articles in peer-reviewed journals. He's one of the biggest contributors of publication of faculty, authored two books and co-authored one book chapter. He has six U.S. patent application and four U.S. patent granted in the area of natural product research. He has secured 13 research grants from the public sector organization in Malaysia. He's also a reviewer of, of many international journals, including Drug Discovery Today, Food Chemistry, International Journal of Biological Macromolecules, Bioorganic Chemistry, Future Medical Chemistry, and also editorial board member of International Journal of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences. He has many local and international research partners in Malaysia and different countries, namely Pakistan, South Korea, Saudi Arabia, Oman, and India. So today, Dr. Said Adnan will be giving a talk on the fascinating world of NMR spectroscopy. So over to you, Dr. Said Adnan. Yes, thank you very much. All right. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum and good morning. Thank you for your introduction, Dr. Gurmi, and thank you for giving me the chance to share some of the some of the knowledge uh, and experiences uh, uh, in the field of nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. So, uh, in this uh, talk, um, I will talk about uh, the uh, about the nuclear magnetic resonance. Uh, what nuclear magnetic resonance can do for us and how versatile and powerful this uh, uh, tool is. So I will not go into the depth of uh, this technical details of uh, the nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy and uh, I will also avoid some of the technical words which usually use in nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. Just I will give you the overview of uh, how versatile and powerful this technique is and uh, who can be who can be the uh, players of this uh, uh, spectroscopy so uh, bear with me till the end so uh, i will be able to uh, convey this message uh, by the end of this presentation that um, who can use this uh, spectroscopy, uh, this nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy or uh, instrument. So now this instrument is not only for the chemist. Uh, this uh, usually the people uh, have the thinking that uh, this instrument is only for the for chemistry or for for the use use of the chemist. So inshallah, by the end of this presentation, I will be able to convey this message that anyone can use this instrument. Any, anyone can get the knowledge regarding samples, whatever the sample is, whether it is from the natural product, whether it is from uh, uh, the blood sample, serum, or whether the, uh, the formulation, any sample, and can get the chemical information from uh, the, this uh, instrument. So bear with me till the end. So. So I will start my talk with uh, this uh, the quote from uh, James Peebles that my advice to young people entering science, you should do it for the love of science. You should enter the science because you are fascinated by
by 8. So first of all, I will go it's just a uh, just a brief, very very brief introduction of nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. I will not go into the detail of instrumentation. I will not go into uh, the uh, depth knowledge, depth science of nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. Just uh, overview what this instrument is and how this instrument works. So nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy is, uh, is actually the spectroscopic technique in which molecule means your sample or any sample is, uh, is interact by the radio frequency, which is uh, actually the uh, the uh, the low or the less energy uh, photons, which uh, strike the the sample and we get the information about the samples, chemical entities, uh, or whatever in the sample is can be uh, 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 can be uh, shown into in the form of the spectrum. Uh, so uh, the sample is usually put into uh, this uh, uh, magnet, which is the uh, this uh, the, this is the sample right and sample is uh, is under the influence of this ultra shielded magnet and, and then radio frequency is provided to the sample and so what what uh, in the sample usually analyzes the nucleus all the nuclei of an atom in a, in your sample is analyzed just like for example in case of the uv uh, this a uh, double bond uh, uh, conjugation and all other technique. In this uh, technique, the uh, nuclei of an atom, because every atom has a nucle nucleus, right? So it can analyze whatever the nuclei is in a sample. It depends upon uh, which nuclei you are interested in, whether the hydrogen, whether the carbon, whether the nitrogen. It's you can easily analyze by this instrument. So this is the brief introduction that how these uh, spectroscopic technique works. Uh, work. So this uh, that uh, as you can see in this one, the instrument is look like this. This one is the big tank. This is uh, so in in this tank there is the uh, uh, the magnet, the superconducting magnet inside. So the sample is go from here. And then, uh, it's, uh, under the influence of a strong paramagnetic field, the uh, and provided the radio frequency, the sample will be uh, the spectrum will uh, will be generated. So that's how this instrument is works. So which nuclei is usually the nuclei which is uh, visible by the NMR, which is called the NMR active nuclei. So these are usually called the NMR visible nuclei. NMR can visualize, NMR can see the, uh, the what is inside your sample is. So uh, for example, uh, the, you can see the periodic table. This is hydrogen and the carbon and the nitrogen and the oxygen and the sulfur. So these are the common nuclei which have spin quantum number. Sorry, I can just little bit uh, go into little bit detail, not so much, right? Spin quantum number can be if there is spin quantum number half or so these nuclei or spin quantum number is in integer in form. They are called the NMR active nuclei. So usually uh, in our samples, a lot of hydrogens are in the sample, carbon, nitrogen so all this uh, this have the isotope whether hydrogen have isotope proton carbon has isotope c13 and 15 these all are nmr active nuclei if you see the organic samples right or by or in any biological samples which contain most of the samples contain the uh, this proton which is the hydrogen and sample, the biological samples generally contain the N nitrogen and 15 isotope is used. So these are all nuclei which can be visualized by the NMR. So this is called, these nuclei are called NMR visible nuclei or NMR active nuclei. So this is how, how this instrument is uh, just an introduction of uh, this instrument, how this use and what this instrument meant analyze in your sample. 
so the question is what nmr can do for us so what will be the sample for the nmr so there are any 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 sample you can use for the analysis purpose for example the isolate or any other compound isolate from the natural product usually the people have concept that only if you have the pure compound only you have uh, the isolate uh, or uh, the compound isolate from the nature product are only can be analyzed by these uh, uh, this nmr but you nmr is now declared as the universal detector whatever you want to analyze you want, want to see in your sample you can just put in put into it and then you can get the information about your sample sample can be isolate from the nature product whether from the plant whether from the uh, this uh, microorganism uh, or you want to analyze the food quality of the food any food quality foodomics or the this uh, nature product uh, metabolomics we will talk later on uh, uh, so that can be your the sample any back any bi biological sample for example e coli bacteria for example the fungal organism for example you want to analyze what metabolites are produced by the fungi what metabolites are are present in the crude extract of the plant these are all the sample for the anama right any biofluids if let's say you want to analyze the biofluids for example serum for example urine is the best example for it, for the analysis in case of the human if you want to see the creatinine ratio if you want to see the uh, the in the, the lipid profile in the uh, in the uh, blood sample or in the feces uh, what are the compounds what are the for example uh, what are the abnormalities in the uh, in the feces as compared to the normal healthy person anything can be the sample whether you are interested to see interested to see the complex formation uh, the uh, what are the complex form and how what are the molecular diffusion for example uh, the solubility of the com your compound solubility of the samples the sample which diffuses fast the sample which diffuses slowly and so this all can be the sample for the anama so that's why it uh, it is de uh, declared as the universal detector and as a result of this analysis you can get the spectrum i will not go into the detail of how we can how and uh, anyone can interpret this are uh, i will only just show the some of the some of the uh, this analysis results and try to uh, show that this instrument can uh, can be used by any one whether uh, the so sample if let's say isolated sample if let's say uh, the purity you can once one can check the purity of the sample one can see the uh, do the quantification of the sample uh, and then the uh, the metabolomics um, uh, what are the metabolites produced in the urine what are the metabolites from the serum what are the pl meta plant based metabolites all the metabolites the, the, the metabolite profiling can be possible in the, through this universal detector uh, so uh, as a result of the analysis can get the or the spectrum and then spectrum has some of the information so all the information all the protons or all the nuclei have certain resonance some certain uh, chemical shape so that can be that can be get from the reference already reported or having the nmr table that can be uh, uh, considered for the in case of the elucidation and then so uh, drug metabolism can be studied through this nmr drug characterization quality control uh, this uh, new uh, marker i uh, this identification group differentiation for example if let's say they for example the two uh, this uh, if let's say for example 20 or 25 people are uh, people you can take the urine sample of 25 people and then phenotypically you can differentiate with on the basis of the metabolite uh, that these uh, people are different phenotypically uh, by the help of this instrument and then the most fascinating thing uh, of this instrument is it can be a uh, 
the uh, detector detector for the early disease identification if let's say any early, early disease cancer and tumor and all so on the basis of this uh, metabolite and the basis of metabolite profiling on metabolic profiling can one can uh, compare with the healthy person and then classify or can identify the uh, the, this uh, early diagnosis of uh, the disease. So this uh, much uh, much can be uh, can be analyzed through this instrument. So later on, I will go one by one and then uh, the show you some of the fascinating uh, uh, the fascinating uh, character of fascinating uh, role of this instrument. So they are, they are just I will I will. Uh, be on the tip of the iceberg. I will not go into the detail because uh, uh, one uh, talk or presentation is not enough to uh, uh, understand uh, the whole the, 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 uh, this topic. So I will just uh, cover uh, the, these all the applications of this uh, nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. The first one, which is very widely used, this is instrument widely used by the, for the structural elucidation of a small molecule as well as the macromolecule. And then after this metabolomics, prediction of the in vivo mechanism of action, protein ligand screening, molecular diffusion, quality, uh, this quantitative analysis, biomolecule, uh, the recent development of the biomolecule in the field of COVID-19. I will show some of the results. Uh, some of the fascinating work has been done last month in uh, 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 Broker Biospin Germany. They have elucidated the structure of RNA, uh, structure of RNA through the nuclear magnetic resonance. I will show how beautifully they are. Uh, they have isolated. Uh, they have. Uh, characterize the RNA uh, structure through this uh, fascinating technique. And then I will go with, uh, with the structure biology in cell and nuclear magnetic resonance. And then after the, at, at the end, uh, what uh, the contribution of the NMR in the field of computational chemistry. So this is, uh, 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 this is how the, the sampling and then after this sample is put into the magnet. And then after this, the uh, uh, this information coming out from this universal detector in the form of the uh, this NMR profile or new NMR spectrum, which can give the information about the set of metabolite. So set of all the metabolite or metabolite fingerprinting, and then it this data will be processed, and after this. It can be project in the form of chemometric, for example, PCA or PLSDA. So this is the easiest way to uh, to show the big, uh, the large data, convert the large data into the into the simple is uh, the small uh, 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 PCA uh, uh, PCA pattern. So it can easily justify or easily. Uh, um, show the picture that what are the metabolites different in case of different individuals. So that this is how uh, the, this, um, the practical aspect a little bit about the, the, this instrument. So this was the first NMR has been recorded in uh, late uh, 40s. Uh, but, uh, in, so this is the NMR, just NMR of the ethanol. So ethanol, you can see the ethanol is CH3, CH2, OH. So if let's say you see the number of the proton, I'm only talk, talking about the proton means hydrogen because almost most of the samples contain uh, about 90 to 95 samples per percent of the samples contain the hydrogen. So uh, this is the spectrum recorded uh, in K, uh, uh, recorded uh, 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 for the ethanol. The ethanol contain the K3 type of hydrogen, for example, CH3. CH2 and OH means three proton. So means there are three signals. This is the base of this. That's how this instrument analyzes the number of the proton, type of the protons in your, or type of the nuclei in a sample. This was the first uh, NMR high resolution NMR recorded first time. Uh, uh, first time uh, uh, the sample is the uh, was the ethanol. 
So first of all, first topic is the structure is the elucidation of small com uh, molecules. I will not uh, the, again. I will not go into the detail. Just I am showing that how the spectrum look like and how it uh, this instrument uh, 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 is uh, helping to elucidate the structure, elucidate in the different parts of the application. So for example, this is the compound, right? So these are the resonances. These are some of the signals, right? Uh, the, these are some of the signals which show that how many different type of the proton in your sample. That's how this is the NMR, proton NMR looks like. So these are all are the frequencies of the particular protons which help in the elucidation of the structure. So, uh, for example, uh, 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 for example, this is one of the example is caffeine is metabolized in the liver into three alkaloids. So, it may, this caffeine is metabolized into the three metabolites. So, this is this through this technique, one can easily can be um, elucidate that what are that what are the three metabolites produced by as a uh, as a metabolism of the caffeine for example number of the proton for example number of the carbon 13 signals so carbon 13 nuclei can easily predict that the what metabolite form as a result of the metabolism and other other part of uh, the the technique also uh, 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 is involved in the structural elucidation of the compounds for example homonuclear means same type of the nuclei and it gives the information about the different type of the nuclei. For example, hydrogen with the correlation with the carbon means you can get the information about multi nuclei present in your sample. So, for example, hydrogen, for example, carbon, for example, F19, for example, N15 uh, and P31, all nuclei can be detectable through this nuclear this uh, instrument. So uh, the, the, I have shown that the, this is the one dimension technique, one which is only on the x axis one dimension. Sometimes this one dimensional information is not enough, not enough for the structure elucidation for metabolomic study. So for that one, we need the soup. Uh, uh, this is the soup cup of the NMR means that NMR uh, the, is not a only single technique only one dimension technique it has comprises of many type of techniques many type of experiments many type of so each and every experiment gave the information about the uh, the the metabolic profile for structure elucidation so that's how this is the alphabetical soup of the nmr is comprises of many type of experiment yeah, many type of experiment which give the information about the chemical entities, information about the uh, compounds in a sample. So some, uh, so one dimension technique, uh, one dimension is not always enough and uh, gives uh, enough information for structure elucidation for in order to find the chemical information. So uh, uh, the second dimension introduced uh, the playing with the dimensions of NMR. It gives the information about who, who is connect with whom right uh, so or the pro this for example this methyl is uh, ch3 is connect with this ch uh, ch so it this cozy this is a this is one spectrum cozy co this is a correlation correlation is spectroscopic so sorry a uh, little bit i will use uh, this uh, romantic words in enema right which is uh, some uh, romantic for me i uh, right so uh, the cozy spectrum is uh, give the information about who is connected with whom. So it is the second dimension. So this is the first dimension and this one is the second dimension, which gives the information that I am connected with this uh, CH, right? So it gives the information. They are talking to each other. These protons are really talking with, uh, with the neighboring proton. And this talking information, we can get the information in the form of the cozy spectrum so that the second the introduction of the second dimension gives the information about more detailed information about the a structure so this is also this so these type uh, two dimension and three dimension techniques are 
play a very important role in case of the structural elucidation of the compounds. So this is few structure. I will I know I will don't I will not go into the detail. So few of the structures uh, uh, we have uh, isolated from the plant from uh, uh, different parts of the plant plant and we elucidate this structure with the help of the nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. So uh, uh, this technique uh, can uh, this instrument can help to elucidate the structure of small compound as well a micromolecule as well as the macro molecules now i will enter into the second part which is a very very uh, 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 demanding topic in case of uh, the field of the science uh, in field of this is uh, the metabolomics the study of the set of the uh, set of the metabolites or metabolome characterization of the set of the metabolite which is called the metabolome so this gave the in this instrument can easily give the information about the set of metabolome which is so uh, which is called the metabolomics so uh, the, the, i will talk about little bit about the nmr based metabolomics so you can see the metabolites all the met set of the metabolites are the are the result of the expression from the gene and it can decide the uh, the, the phenotypic characters of the uh, any sample right so what are the character what are the type of the metabolites so all the translation from the genomics will be transformed into transcriptive uh, and then pro uh, this proteomics and then after this the uh, uh, produce the metabolomics so means that a metabolite gives the information about uh, of the gene expression also so metabolites serve as a direct signature of biochemical activity so the so they have the whatever the expression of the genes uh, different gene can be translated in the form of the set of the metabolites uh, or the different uh, production of different metabolites for example this is a met this is the uh, this uh, spectrum of this any healthy state and this is the disease so it can be on the basis of the metabolites the different metabolites set in uh, as compared to the healthy person easily can be uh, phenotypically uh, 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 express the uh, what is a metabolite difference in K as compared to the healthy one uh, if you compare the healthy metabolite with the uh, healthy state and the disease state so uh, the metabolite gave a lot of information about the, the early stage of disease diagnosis also so many things happen at the same time meaning meaning that at the at the uh, meaning that uh, the uh, uh, for example uh, in the set of the metabolites some metabolite form some metabolite ratio come, uh, for uh, decrease and then some some uh, some unwanted metabolites form as a form as a result of some of the uh, infection or disease can e can be uh, monitor or can be uh, analyzed through this uh, uh, nmr based metabolomics also so this is the dark matter for uh, the so for example uh, uh, this uh, this is the uh, area which can be can be easily can be analyzed through this uh, normal uh, uh, techniques for example mass for example basic use of the uh, experiment technique in case of the nmr but the huge area which is the, the metabolic uh, this metabolic dark area is undiscovered so nmr based metabolomics can help to discover a bit uh, this solve the this uh, metabolomic dark matter in order to find the what is the metabolic pathway of the formation of different type of metabolites what are the metabolites produced in, uh, dif by different species of the plant different fungi or different media produce different type of the fungi for example different diseases have different type of metabolism metabolites uh, as compared to the uh, the healthy person so the this somehow uh, this and uh, this spectroscopic technique can help to resolve this uh, this dark matter so there are two different uh, techniques which can uh, uh, the, the widely used in case of the metabolomics is the uh, uh, this uh, nuclear magnetic resonance as well as the second one is the this uh, mass spectroscopy 
mass spectrometry so uh, the may, may, the the fascinating thing in case of the nu uh, nuclear magnetic resonance right uh, the is the high reproducibility and compound identification this is only the two feature in case of the uh, in ca in case of the compound identity is uh, highly uh, very high in case of the nuclear magnetic resonance as compared to the mass spectrometry high reproducibility of the results in our raw data and then the second one is the uh, type of the molecule and so any type of the molecule any molecule containing nmr active nuclei can be detect through the nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy so this is how the that so this that's how this uh, nmr based metabolomics uh, plays a very important role in uh, this metabolic metabolomic profile as compared to mass although mass has also a very big contributor in case of the nmr uh, in case of the metabolomic study but uh, 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 nmr gave a lot of more or more information about the metabolites uh, and what is going on in in uh, in case of the, the metabolomic change uh, in the sample can easily can be detected through this uh, uh, nmr based metabolomics so it, so uh, this is the metabolomic uh, uh, uh metabolite detect by uh, detect through nmr in case of different uh, samples for example in case of urine for example the serum so uh, the metabolites which can be characterized through nmr in case of the urine carbohydrate sugar in the urine organic acids amino acids alcohols and other organic compounds in case of the urine the so you can see this uh, how uh, the, the, the this uh, is, uh, spectroscopic technique can uh, 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 play an important role in the correct in the identification of the met, uh, these uh, metabolites in the different samples in case of the urine sample serum serum saliva and so on so this is the proton nmr of the complex urine so uh, so there you can see how uh, how helpful this spectroscopic technique is each and every each and every uh, speaks uh, 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 have uh, some meaning right so the meaning that it character it has uh, the responsible for the uh, metabolites or it can uh, 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 give the identification that the, these are the metabolites present in a urine so up uh, these uh, so these are all are the me metabolites can uh, be characterized through the nmr so this is the frequencies of different uh, different uh, different metabolites in a urine and it has a specific frequency so uh, for example this is creatinine always creatinine can be resonate around uh, around 3 something right so by by, uh, by the fixed frequency of the creatinine if one can get the information about the creatinine and you can see the highest peak means it the creatinine is uh, the um, uh, the major metabolite in case of the uh, in in major metabolite in the human urine sample so this is a 2d technique which gives the further information about the metabolites about 200 uh, carbonyl compounds containing can be can identify through uh, through this uh, this 2d technique so each and every spot you can see this spot spot gave the information about the metabolite present in a urine so this uh, this technique further give the information about the a structure about the compounds present in a sample so this is uh, uh, the uh, the phenotype characterization of the individual so you can see the urine sample from the uh, the 12 healthy person so this is uh, the the pca uh, uh, or pca information of the uh, the sample uh, 12 uh, samples from 12 healthy uh, donors uh, urine sample and each each is uh, uh, is the uh, the entry uh, this in uh, the intra in the intra individual uh, very uh, this uh, sample this one so you can see the intra individual variation is less as compared to the inter individual variation 
so it it so this is due to the invariant part of the metabolome characterized of each individual which identify the individual phenotypically means all met individuals have different metabolic pathway or metabolic profiling so this is the protons uh, nmr self spectrum of the serum right it gave them a lot of information about the metabolite each and every resonance have uh, have to speak is that are uh, the comp uh, which compound it is uh, a present in the blood serum so this is the metabolic information from the the and from the tissues so you can see the tissues from the liver tissues for uh, this red blood cells and uh, the, so different different metabolite information we can get from the help of this instrument nmr so it can have it can also uh, 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 used as a diagnostic tool also for example uh, as i uh, as i mentioned in my in uh, before that uh, the creatinine in the urine and the lipid profiling in the uh, in the this human plasma can give the information about uh, the uh, the presence of uh, the the lipids uh, the uh, ratio of the lipids quantification of the lipids and then the percentage of the creatinine in a human human urine it can be used as a diagnostic tool also and in case of the, this is the uh, uh, proton nmr spectrum of the feces it give information about a lot of metabolites lot of metabolite information you can get from your feces also that uh, uh, that what uh, what is the difference from the normal feces as, as compared to and then it also characterize what you eat right it uh, depend upon uh, the what you eat and different metabolites are produced as a result of the metabolism you can get all the picture all the metabolic information through this instrument and then uh, so it also it also uh, used for the diagnostic tool in case of the diabetes also so for example this is the proton nmr of the healthy person and this is the proton nmr of the diabetic person so this is some of the resonances of the uh, glucose in the urine so uh, in the urine so it is uh, so uh, it can easily detect the presence of the urine in a Uh, 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 urine uh, 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 characterize the presence of the uh, this um, carbohydrate or sugar in a urine um, uh, a diagnostic tool for the uh, diabetes also so this is a pca graph can see the individual how the what, what these are the met other metabolites of the individuals and this is the metabolite in case of the diabetes different metabolic uh, metabol uh, metabolites or metabolic profile in case of the diabetes as a compared to the healthy uh, person so uh, it, so this tool can uh, be uh, act as a universal detector for the early disease detection so this is uh, also one of the uh, one of the example in case of the one of the case study of the woman in a early normal pregnancy as compared to the mass abortion so they have found that the in case of the abortion mass abortion there are a lot of uh, amino acid with um, um, the lot of this uh, uh, amino acid produced in case of the mass abortion as compared to the uh, this uh, the uh, proton nmr uh, profile of the uh, this uh, early pre normal pregnancy so that it show very high intensities of this metabolic profiles these are so high intensities if you can see uh, the the intensities of the some of the compounds in case of the mass abortion is very high and the abnormal metabolism in case of metabolism of amino acid in case of the mass abortion as compared to the uh, as compared to the uh, this woman a uh, woman uh, 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 metabolism in case of the woman in early pregnancy uh, normal pregnancy so one can easily i uh, just uh, uh, by through this instrument one can easily can be identify the 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 on the basis of the metabolic profile that what is going on uh, uh, in their body also so this is also 
a very good study of the in case of the hepatotoxicity and neurotoxicity of induced through different through different samples and then they have found that due to the this uh, induce of the uh, compound that it produce a different type of the metabolite so uh, 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 but through this uh, proton and mr based metabolomic you can easily can be identify or you can be monitor the the uh, the in case of the in case of the uh, hepatotoxicity in case of neurotoxicity or different type of toxicity what are the metabolites produced as a result of the index of the induce of uh, uh, the uh, sample so uh, this so these all are the metabolites which is the indication as compared to the so you the, this control this is one control this is the low dose and higher dose so uh, you can see in case of uh, uh, the in case of this uh, the control in case of the not uh, this uh, this one is the low dose and higher dose the met, some of the metabolites are are in case of uh, in case of uh, this uh, uh, low uh, low uh, low dose and the high dose which is due to the uh, toxicity induced through the sample food mix uh, uh, it also uh, play a very important role in order to uh, uh, in order to uh, analyze the different foods uh, different uh, metabolites or different uh, different components in the food Uh, or the in order or to check the quality control with the uh, with cut uh, through this is so man so you can see this one is the fruit juice with they are from different countries they have the different metabolomic profile they have different metabolites uh, some metabolites can match some metabolite can match uh, and others are not so it can be used for the uh, idea for the this metabolomic matching with the with different of different samples uh, Uh, with different origins, different uh, uh, different part of the world, or different uh, type of uh, uh, the origin of the samples, uh, so it can be uh, this is uh, spectroscopic technique can use for this purpose. This is also uh, uh, the plant-based metabolomics in case of uh, the uh, this uh, the axillary leaves from the China, from the Taiwan, from the Australia. you can see that the metabolic uh, how much the metabolomic profile is different in case of the sample from different o region so this is a uh, 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 this uh, this is a met metabolic profile of the uh, this uh, identification of the edible oil so in case of uh, uh, the comparison of edible oil uh, and then waste oil and the fixed oil so as you can see in case of the edible oil there is edible oil is in having the high concentration of phenolic compound as compared to the uh, this waste oil which contain the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon which is harmful for the human in case of the waste cooking oil as compared to the edible oil uh, uh, or uh, uh, the, the edible oil which contain the the phenolic compounds which is uh, good for the human health so this is sumen through this is sumen you can easily can be compare what are the metabolites what are the unwanted uh, unwanted substances form as a result of frying the oil or reuse the same oil uh, or use the waste cooking oil as compared to the edible oil so this is the fast technique through which you can uh, you analyze the your samples and what are the metabolites produced as a result of uh, the uh, the as a result of the different action of uh, um different action of uh, the samples for example then in this case we have seen that the fried oil contain uh, the uh, uh, the phenolic compounds more as compared to the polycyclic compound hydrocarbon in case of the fried oils nmr based metabolic ma metabolomics also give a, 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 a lot of information about the compounds present in the dark plant stack for example you can see this one leaves of the, this plant and the, uh, it contain these uh, compounds so these compounds all peaks are matched with the the uh, the, sample, the compounds present in a leaf of this compound so this is the good source or uh, in order to find out the Uh, that some of the compounds reference compounds in the product stack 
so uh, the, through this method, uh, uh, this uh, through this uh, technique, we have uh, analyzed different type of uh, different type of the plant stack from this foniculum, uh, this uh, vul vulgarity seeds, right? And then we have uh, isolated, uh, we have extract the uh, the uh, extract uh, the crude extract from the seeds and then after this uh, this uh, crude extract has been subjected into the NMR and it gave a lot of information about what are the compounds produced in, uh, what are the compounds present in the uh, so the seed extract of of, of this uh, this uh, uh, this plant so you can see each and every peak has the different information about this one is the terpene flavonoid and this one gives the information about the terpene so crude extract also gave a lot of information about what are the chemical consequence in the present in the plant. So this is also one of the plant-based metabolomic study has been done, which has the pro this protective effect, right? So uh, the NMR uh, pro, the NMR profiling of the crude extract gave a lot of information about the presence of the glycoside, presence of the coumarin, presence of the, the cuninone. Uh, quinone and presence of the alkaloid in case of this sample. So this is uh, so uh, this instrument of uh, is uh, also used for the this crude study. If let's say you want to stay study or only the this uh, crude stack uh, give the a lot of information. What are the chemical constituents in a sample? So this is also one of the study has been done uh, uh, a pharmacological effect of turmeric which has already been published. Uh, so the, these, uh, through this metabolomic study, we have identified that these, uh, these, uh, these, uh, uh, these, uh, these compounds, which is, uh, which is present in the crude stack, which is responsible for the expression of the muscarinic receptor gene one, M1, M3, and M5. So, uh, so these uh, plant-based metabolomics, uh, proton NMR-based metabolomics, gave a lot of information about the compounds present in a crude extract. For example, if you have any crude extract uh, which have some biological activity, it's straightforward. You can dissolve into the sample, into the into the into the solvent, and then subject into the uh, NMR, and then uh, you can get a lot of information about what are the chemical intent in entities what are the compounds present in a comp in a samples on the basis of the chemical shift on the basis of literature review you can identify that these comp these are the resonances of these uh, compounds and these compounds are present in a crude stack and these uh, the, through these crude compounds uh, uh, these compounds are responsible for this uh, so that the, the activity so this uh, has uh, this uh, work has been already been published uh, and then uh, uh, a lot of compounds has been uh, um, um, characterized through uh, the uh, plant-based um, metabolomics. This is also one of the study has been done with the alkaloidal alkaloidal extract from the plant leaves, and through the proton NMR spectroscopy, uh, we have isolated, uh, we have identified that this car, this uh, the the carbinazole uh, alkaloids are responsible for the proto this uh, protective effect of the uh, in case of this uh, alkaloidal extract pretty uh, so uh, this uh, technique uh, this uh, spectroscopic technique also used in order to uh, in order to identify mechanism of action for example this is uh, the different uh, different drugs as uh, different drugs is used uh, in case of this uh, uh, the bacteria mycobacterium and as a, on the basis of diff, uh, different, uh, using the different drugs, different mechanism of action has been uh, has been uh, uh, investigated that uh, they're, they're using the different type of the drugs have different metabolomic profiling in case of the, in case of uh, these uh, uh, drug, uh, in case of in vivo mechanism of action of uh, these uh, drugs. Uh, uh, so is this on the basis of the different type of the metabolite one can easily can be isolated uh, and uh, uh, identify that what type of the uh, what will be the mechanism of action of the of uh, for the drug which is uh, any lead drug can uh, can be uh, for the uh, for the 
uh, for the isolation of uh, this uh, in vivo mechanism of action of uh, any uh, untargeted or any uh, any compound which you are interested in uh, so easily can be analyzed through the metabolomic profile now the third part is very interesting one which is the fragment based screening by the nmr which is also called the protein ligand screening by nmr so this is very very uh, uh, versatile and powerful technique for in order to find out where the ligand whether the ligand is bind with the receptor or not right this technique helps a lot so what what we have usually do in this technique is this is the protein so what we do in this experiment is we uh, saturate the all the resonances of the protein we saturate all the resonance of, of the protein and then we uh, uh, and then we introduce uh, the ligand so when the ligand is bind with the receptor so all the saturation all the saturation is transferred from receptor to the ligand and then uh, 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 that uh, uh, so once the this resonance is transferred to the ligand so nmr signal will be arises so that's how you can we can get the information about the uh, where the ligand is bind with the receptor or whether the ligand can have ability to bind with the uh, with the receptor or not so in so on the ba on the basis of this uh, resonance of the ligand one can identify whether pro uh, the ligand is bind with the protein or not so in this one we need the we need the uh, this uh, axis of the ligand axis of the ligand and then uh, low uh, low uh, this low concentration or low amount of the protein right and then it uh, wherever the ligand can bind with the receptor the receptor resonance or receptor saturation is transferred into the ligand and uh, as a as a result of the transfer of the resonance uh, resonance is the signal of this uh, this ligand will be uh, arises or will be interrupt in the in the nmr so the experiment which is used for this uh, uh, for this uh, uh, ligand uh, uh, receptor binding is the uh, this uh, um, saturation transfer difference nmr spectroscopy so you can see this is the known bonding fragment and this one is the, the fragment which is bind so it has uh, with the respect to the time uh, so uh, uh, one can identify that this ligand have ability to bind with the receptor and this ligand have not ability to bind with the receptor so uh, can, these are some of the technique uh, which can use for the saturation transfer difference uh, or the ligand based uh, or fragment based screening the saturation transfer difference water loxis experiment and transfer noe experiment so this is how you can see this is a reference spectrum and once the this uh, this uh, ligand bind with the receptor uh, uh, so this is the two uh, two ligand uh, so we want to see which ligand bind with the receptor so you can see this one is the peak for this one and this one is the peak for this uh, fragment or this uh, ligand so there as, uh, as a result of this uh, this uh, protein ligand interaction this ligand is bind with the receptor so saturation is transferred from saturation is transferred from the uh, this uh, uh, protein or receptor to the ligand and you can see uh, the uh, the the signal the signal of the signal of this uh, uh, this one ligand is interrupted or will be uh, affect as compared to the signal of this fragment that's how we can easily easily can one can easily analyze that which ligand is bind with the receptor only the receptor which is bind with the ligand the saturation will be transferred to the so this is how these are the compounds uh, these are the compound which uh, which can be have uh, some ab ability to bind with the receptor through the resonances one can easily identify you can see this is the respect uh, reference spectrum and this one is the 
SCD and MR spectrum. The peak resonance of this uh, rises, right? So meaning that this, uh, this compound bind with the receptor, right? And then this one also here you can see this compound uh, is bind with the receptor because of the uh, effect on the resonance. So this is all one study of the SCD and MR study, the, uh, the binding of the l tryptophan and the sucrose with the BSA. So you can see l tryptophan bind with the BSA while sacrose is not, which is easily identified through proton and MR SCD spectrum. So you can see this is the reference spectrum. This one is the reference spectrum of this uh, l tryptophan and the glucose. This is the glucose signal. This one is uh, l tryptophan signal and this is the SCD and MR spectrum. So if we compare, then you can see uh, the there is no signal at the in case of glucose means no saturation transfer in case of glucose, meaning that glucose or meaning that sucrose is not bind with BSA, while the tryptophan bind with the tryptophan bind with the BSA. So BSA transfer resonance to the tryptophan and it identifies that but the tryptophan has ability to bind with the uh, BSA as compared to the sucrose. So this is time steady as you can increase the saturation time means saturated the protein, the signal, the signal will be increased in case of L tryptophan. It uh, what is this signal increasing uh, tell us the information about the 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 pro this uh, proton proximity to the receptor surface means the as you increase the saturation time more and more binding of L tryptophan with with the BSA so it uh, so this resonance is increase in the resonances give a lot of information uh, about the binding of the protein uh, binding of the ligand with the protein. So this is also one of the study between of this, uh, the binding of the, uh, the peptide with the cell. So this is the peptide spectrum and this is the spectrum of E. coli, uh, e. coli STD spectrum. So these are the resonances increase means this peptide is uh, and a lot of contribution of aromatic proton with the E. coli cell means the aromatic part of the aromatic proton resonance increase means this uh, this uh, aromatic part of this compound is strongly binding binded with the e coli so. now the fourth one is nmr will contribute a lot in case of the in case of the molecular diffusion so the it based the this technique based on the diffusion coefficient if the compound a compound uh, the, uh, the molecular size of the compound increase diffusibility will be decreased on the ba this base of this phenomena uh, this technique is used so this technique can be used for the uh, in order to see the hydrogen bonding in a compound in case of the host gas uh, complex supramolecular assemblies aggregation mixture uh, uh, separation so this is a widely the technique is widely used for the mixture uh, mixture separation as well as uh, the host gas uh, the host uh, gas complex and hydrogen bonding. So you can see very simple example of hydrogen bonding study with this uh, with uh, diffusion order spectroscopy, which is called the DOSI. So this is the spectrum of cyclohexanol and the phenol in case of CdCl3. So this one is the diffusion coefficient rate, and this one is the proton NMR signal. So if you see in case of the phenol and cyclohexanol, this is the cyclohexanol signal. This one is the phenolic signal. Phenol has more diffusibility as compared to the cyclohexanol. But if we uh, put one equimolar of DMSO, then the phenol diffusibility will be less as compared to the uh, as compared to the cyclohexanol. Why? Because of the presence of hydrogen bonding in case of the DMSO. So there will be the hydrogen bonding. There will be the hydrogen bonding in case of the phenol. In case of the phenol and in the presence of the DMSO in case of the phenol, increase the, uh, diffu uh, increase the diffusion coefficient means it's, it's strict in the diffusion. And that's how you can get the information about the hydrogen bonding in the dozy spectrum. 
so it can use for the mixer analysis so meaning that uh, your, let's say you have the mixer of dmso glycol and the caffeine so on the basis of the diffusion of uh, diffusion rate of the different compound this uh, the this compound can be easily the mixer can be easily characterized so this is also the inter uh, this uh, um, uh, the interaction of uh, of the interaction of the complex or on the compound so the gamma cyclodextrin and the adamantane uh, the, the one carboxylic acid so this is the spectrum of gamma cyclo uh, cyclodextrin this is the spectrum of uh, the adamantane so once these compounds are mixed together right or mixed together they form the complex this uh, this is adamantane and this gamma there is a complex between the cyclodextrin and the uh, this adamantane and then it can be easily can be investigated through the dozy spectrum this one indicates for the uh, uh, this adamantane this one is the signal for the this one uh, this one is the signal for uh, this uh, uh, the cyclodextrin and uh, the one is to one the extra signal is this one a extra signal of this green is this one which shows the complex formation between the cyclodextrin and adamantane so it is very uh, useful experiment in order to in order to uh, investigate the complex formation this is also one of the example of host gas complex formation uh, that or the bounded one with the single free gas how this gas comes and then form the bonding or form the uh, the complex with the with the with the host and then the complex information is here it is also used for the, the in order to identify the active ingredient in case of the herbal uh, herbal uh, dietary supplements diff identification of different compounds on the base of the diffusion coefficient you can easily can be identify the these apis in a uh, herbal dietary supplement so this is a one of the investigation we have published uh, the, the complex formation uh, the, the investigation of solubility enhancement of the uh, complex through nmr so this is uh, through based on the base of nmr and 2d noz 2d noz we have identified that the complex formation between uh, between the uh, simvastatin by uh, the and the arginine now the uh, uh, move to and uh, move to the quantitative analysis uh, the nmr also play a very important role in order to identify in order to uh, to see the purity of the sample and in order to find find out the uh, or in order to do do, do the quantification uh, quantitation of the sample so this is one of the study you can see on the uh, this is uh, the uh, this quantification or uh, quantitation of this different compounds in a crude extract which is on the basis of the peak ratio on the basis of the nmr signal we can easily identify uh, quantify uh, the uh, the amount uh, the concentration of the uh, ingredient in a sample so this is also the different uh, analysis of the presence of the compound uh, or the quantification uh, of the compounds in a tea sample uh, so this is also uh, the quality control uh, this uh, of the herbal medicine in case so in uh, in order to do the quantification and amma now move to the biochemical part biomolecule what is the contribution of the nmr what are the contribution of nmr in case of the elucidation of structure of various biomolecules in case of uh, the uh, carbohydrate lipids nucleic acid and protein it will play a very important role in for in the in case of the in, get the information about the nucleotide in nucleo uh, uh, this uh, uh, the binding between uh, the uh, between the uh, uh, biomolecules hydrogen bonding it gives a lot of information about the uh, the biomolecule so this is the proton nmr of this protein now i move to what is the contribution of the nmr in case of the covid 19 that i have uh, uh, attended the uh, the uh, one of the training uh, uh, the e training course last month uh in uh, uh, germany bio um, uh, bruca biospin they have elucidate the, they have uh, they have elucidate the structure of uh, this covid 19 uh, this uh, coronavirus uh, so how they elucidate uh, how uh, how they identify 
how they um, separate and identify the uh, the structure of the uh, this uh, coronavirus through the the, the uh, through uh, or by the NMR. So I will just uh, share some of the knowledge uh, regarding this uh, e training uh, uh, training course which I have uh, uh, attended last week uh, last month. So, uh, so this is the overall background. They have prepared the viral DNA and then do the assignments and then do some of the screening of the viral DNA and protein and come up with that. Yeah, that some of the compound have have uh, bind, have ability to bind with the RNA. So, meaning that RNA as a drug target, they have used RNA as a drug target. So what they have done is this is the RNA viruses. This is the gen and this is RNA virus genome. What they have, uh, what uh, what you they have done is uh, they have. Um, uh, so they have, uh, what they have done is they uh, they have identified the four elements which is considered to be the uh, leader region or, or the pathogenic region. So this is they have identified four region one, two, three, and four, and then uh, they took the the three specific region, uh, three specific region, and they cut it, uh, cut apart, and cut apart into the fourteen RNA constants. So they have got, they were cut uh, the RNA, the four, uh, the three specific region of the RNA, cut them into fourteen RNA strains. So these are fourteen, one, two, three and four and so on. So after that, uh, cutting the, this RNA into the 14 different pieces, then they have uh, start the production of the RNA in a list and uh, this label and 15 level uh, media. And uh, uh, after the production of the RNA, they separate the RNA through gel electrophoresis, followed by the recycling HPLC, and then subjected to the NMR spectro scopy so what the information is the on um, um, i am uh, uh, information they get from the uh, this nmr of the rna which is uh, the isolated from the coronavirus so uh, this one they get this is the proton nmr of the rna so this is very complex nmr spectrum of the rna but it gave the information about different amino protein uh, different amino protons uh, and then different sugar moiety protons. So this one is the sugar, uh, this one is the sugar resonances, this one is the amino proton resonances, and this one is the amino proton resonances. So this amino proton resonances give a lot of information about the hydrogen bonding between the primidine uh, in case of the RNA. So, uh, uh, so this NMR information they have used to elucidate the structure of RNA, but as I told you before, that uh, on not one D experiment is not enough. Is uh, not give the enough information in case of uh, in case of structural elucidation. So that's uh, for that they have done some of the uh, uh, this uh, proton N15 HSQC spectrum. So H, uh, what HSQC spectrum is, is? It gives the information of the connectivity of the hydrogen with the carbon. Which, uh, uh, which hydrogen is connected with which hydrogen it gives the information that information and n15 gave the information between what which n is connect or hydrogen bonding between the uh, this uh, n15 right so it gives the information about so all the amino proton give the correlation of this is a complex spectrum of rna but it gave a lot of information about the bonding between the adenine and uracil and guanine and the cytosine uh, so it gave a lot of inf information or uh, amino part give the information which uh, which uh, which uh, uh, what is the bonding and what is the structure of the uh, RNA. So this is all the assignment of different parts or cut part of the RNA. So they have different part part of the RNA. They have uh, elucidated the structure of all 14, all 14 cut pieces of the RNA and they elucidate the structure of RNA with complex 2D spectrum by using the and um, by using this uh, uh, NMR spectroscopy they have elucidate the structure of the RNA so these are all the assignments of the RNA which uh, they have um, 
they have done and uh, during the elucidation of structure of uh, structure of yeah, the corona virus so these are and uh, these are all the assignments they have done they have they got the information about the proton carbon and then what information they have get uh, the different connectivity they have elucidated the structure of the uh, uh, this rna and then after this they use this rna as a drug target they have screened 768 compounds bind with this rna and they have found few of the compound resonances increase and uh, once they bind with the that specific part of the RNA, right? So this structural elucidation will help uh, in order to see the binding information of the compound with the RNA. And they have found that few resonances few. They haven't disclosed the name of the compounds. They just say, uh, see the, some, the, they just uh, highlighted that some of the compounds shows the good uh, binding with the RNA. So uh, uh, this is how they uh, they are using. Still, they are uh, they are. This is uh, these studies are uh, uh, the, still on progress. So they are doing. They are just searching for uh, different candidates as a RNA uh, candidates, drug candidates uh, as a RNA. Uh, this RNA uh, uh, binding with RNA and uh, use the drug as a uh, RNA as a drug target. So this how they have the, that's how the NMR play a very important role in the elucidation of the coronavirus, uh, the RNA uh, uh, structure. Now the application of, uh, in case of uh, in cell NMR uh, in the structure biology, uh, so uh, this in NMR play a very important role in case of the in cell study also in cell NMR study. So over uh, this is only of uh, this first overexpression of these uh, the proteins, and then after this, the grow the protein, the grow that uh, specific cells into the N15 media and uh, the labeled media, and then put into the sample sample tube and subject to the, into the NMR, and then uh, the correct uh, and then identify what's going on in the cell. So this is how the this is the uh, complex spectrum. What is the uh, what uh, the spectrum of the peptide in case of the cell? So this is how they monitor the protein mutation in case of the binding of the metals with a protein, and there the spectrum variation in case of where the bind the known bounded protein and the bounded protein. So this all then get the information about the um, this uh, complex formation in, in in case of in cell CD. So this is how uh, the uh, with the help of this NMR spectrum, uh, um, NMR spectrum, one can study in cell NMR what's going on in the cell. So <coughs> now the last part is uh, how the NMR contributed in case uh, in the field of con computational chemistry. Computational chemists can use the uh, experimental data which is already been published, experimental data, data published and can run the DFT NMR and can correlate or validate the, uh, the, of the, the different chemical shift in case of the experimental, in case of the, uh, the theoretical. And then they compare that what is the difference in the chemical shift in experimental as well as the theoretical. And then they can, they can, they can easily can uh, publish uh, that uh, DFT NMR data also. So it can, this data also can give a lot of information that it validate our experimental results that how the chemical shift variation in case of different compounds. For example, this is the experimental prediction of carbon 13. You can see a lot of uh, a lot of carbon resonances are not so diverted in case of experimental, experimental as well as the predict one. But in case of the proton NMR, it a bit diverted because of the, uh, uh, the because of the splitting pattern, because of the different uh, uh, different experimental conditions in case of the in case of uh, the sample in experimental condition as as uh, compared to the predicted proton NMR. So this is also one of the source for computational chemistry chem chemists that it, uh, they can. Uh, they can uh, they can search out and then find out some interesting NMR data of macromolecules from uh, the different drugs and then they can run the DFT NMR and compare the experimental data with the theoretical data.
so that's why i come to the end the uh, 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 that um, the nmr has many applications in many field um, so i have as i have covered as much as possible uh, in the field of chemistry biology medicines and health in, and then uh, NMR, NMR uh, nuclear magnetic resonance is primary tool for structural elucidation. It can have the wild metabolic uh, use for wild metabol metabolic screening study for uh, early disease identification. The whole fingerprinting or uh, detects all detectable metabolites in a sample and in cell gives a lot of information about the potent compounds in a drug discovery to save the experimental cost. And we are very fortunate. We are very first fortunate that we have the pro, we have the NMR instrument. So means the cost is already been cut out. So meaning that only the cost for the proton NMR or no cost, right? So just you can take your sample, whether the sample is from the, your um, uh, your plant extract, from, uh, from the fungal extract, from your serum, from the blood, from the blood, any sample, and then put the and then put the sample into the NMR tube. And then you can e detect what are the metabolites, what are happening inside the, uh, your sample, what are the chemical situation of your sample is, can be easily detectable through this fascinating instrument. So thank you for, for, for giving me the time to bear with me at the end. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Said Adnan, for the interesting talk. Uh, we exceeded slightly more than the time schedule. I think he had a lot to share. Um, Thank you very much. Um, we, if you like to learn more, Dr. Said Adnan will be conducting a three-series short course on NMR soon. The dates has not been finalized. We will we will um, make an announcement very soon. So, um, any questions from the floor? Can we open up for questions? Oh. You can unmute yourself, introduce yourself, and just ask. Uh, we can begin with um, one question at 10.56 by uh, Dr. Sadia. Okay, How? I... Yeah, please go ahead. Okay. My question is regarding this virus because you have mentioned we can, in the last slides, we have some... Uh, research which is going on is not uh, they haven't done it's uh, clear to all because maybe they are is under progress so they have done this dna and rna binding they have shown with some drugs as well right so uh, because in the earlier we learned here and we as a chemist i know this one because uh, we need some active nuclei in order to know the structures so uh, the virus don't have any nuclei. They are RNA and DNA based. So this NMR can help to diagnose or screen for this uh, nasty uh, virus because there are lack of nuclei and NMR we cannot do without the active nuclei. Yes, interesting question, but uh, we, we are interested in uh, uh, interested in uh, the, of course, the NMR active nuclei, right? And RNA consists of uh, this RNA is ribonucleic acid, right? So uh, it has, of course, it has primidine, right? It has uracil, it has guanine, it has adenosine, it has uh, uh, the cytosine. So these are all contain the nitrogen 15. It is all contain hydrogen. So because of this hydrogen, because of this nitrogen, easily can be elucidate the structure of RNA because it contain hydrogen, it contain nitrogen and 15, right? Uh, so means it uh, RNA is uh, RNA composed of uh, the two parts, right? Number one is ribose sugar. Number two is the uh, this uh, this primidine, right? So primidine it contain the uh, this uh, this adenine, cytosine, guanine, and uracil. So all have hydrogen, all have N15. Label the RNA with N15 and then can be uh, uh, run the sample and can get the information about the uh, this uh, so uh, nuclei means hydrogen nuclei right means atom nuclei all of course uh, hydrogen uh, the rna is comp com com uh, composed of uh, all the atoms hydrogen nitrogen on all atoms are uh, 
uh, composed of the nuclei. This is the best tool for the analysis of the RNA. Yeah, I agree. But as such, we see the virus uh, is lack of nuclei. Okay, my next question. No, no, this, is, one is, this one is, this uh, one is, nuclei means in cell nuclei, cell nuclei. But NMR is atom nuclei. Atom means hydrogen atom. Hyd inside the hydrogen atom, there is nuclei. And because of this nuclei, we can easily analyze the rhodes instrument. So we, of course, the it's not complete cell, right? But cell contains the chemical compound. And chemical compound consists of nitrogen and the hydrogen, right? So meaning that it uh, uh, it can easily be analyzed through because or, or if you have the compound, for example, if you have chemical, uh, if you have is mixture, right? So mixture also mixture, uh, metabolite mixture or plant as mixture, right? So plant mixture also not contain cell nuclei, right? Here we are only talking about the uh, presence of hydrogen, nitrogen, and this is the basic part of basic uh, basic uh, atoms are in the in in the sample. And uh, for the uh, serum, for the other disease, we can like cancer, we can uh, diagnose at the early stage by urine sample or by serum. Uh, it's very interesting. So for the COVID, can we, because this one is saliva, right? So is there any research going on to, uh, because you have, uh, send, you have and training, so is there any research to just screen the saliva for the COVID patient? and we can diagnose at early stage as we can diagnose other disease. Yes, sir. So my thinking is it. My thinking is that uh, this, if let's say virus is, uh, if, if virus is inside your saliva or virus is inside your nasal, right? It's inside in uh, uh, saliva. So maybe you can take out the, if let's say infected person, you take out the saliva and then by the help of this, uh, if they, the, if you have the particular data of the RNA, NMR data of the RNA. You match that NMR coronavirus NMR data of RNA and analyze the data of that uh, your sample and match the both data. And if there's a, the uh, all the strain information is 90 to 95 percent is same RNA strain. So I think it can be a good tool for maybe a good tool for uh, the the identification of this uh, this RNA strain. Hopefully, inshallah. And my last question is that uh, because you mentioned about the modeling of this interactions of this ligand enzyme ligand bonding binding. So this enzyme ligand binding is similar like we do molecular modeling for our drugs for medicinal chemistry. So it's similar or if it is not similar, which one is more accurate or more useful or more advanced? Both have the advantages. Both have the equally advantages. That is a theoretical studies, right? But in my point of view is, but uh, in my point of view, this is experimental data. Experimental data always is more reliable as compared to the theoretical data. This is already because here is the pro actual protein and then the binding of the protein with the ligand. So in the case of the theoretical data, you have to take the protein from the data bank, right? And then you in, uh, see the binding of the ligand with the protein. But in case of this one is the real protein and then real ligand binding. I think in my point of view is this, this is experimental data. What is actually chemistry going on with the, with the real uh, this receptor and the bind ligand can, can be easily, uh, can be monitored through NMR. It's more, more practical as uh, more reliable as compared to the of molecular docking or modeling studies. But I'm not denying that both have the importance. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Sadia. Uh, Dr. Said Adnan, um, I think we have exceeded the time. Uh, any okay. more questions from the floor? I think we can take another one. Okay. None, I think. Uh, I have a question, Dr. Said Adnan. Yes. Um, I've been using LCMS previously and um, I'm interested in quantitative analysis of mm -hmm. uh, steroid panel. Um, how is important is it to use internal standard for NMR for quantitation pur purpose? Yeah, uh, for uh, in, or, in order to see the, uh, the uh, quantitation. So, for example, if let's say you want to see the, uh, the, the that particular inter, uh, this internal into your sample, right? Yeah, right. Right. So means right. that you can uh, easily can be identify the quantity. What are the concentration? What is the concentration? What is the quantity of in your uh, of your 
the internal in your uh, uh, in your uh, uh, sample. Will there be a can, yeah. possibility of the internal standard reacting with the compound of interest? Uh huh. Will there be a possibility? Oh, no, no. Yeah, yeah, this is the main thing of this is your compound reactivity. Yeah. yeah, because the compound should be inert. If let's say you want to see, right? If you yeah. want to see the what, uh, what? So there should be no interaction of the compound with the internal standard. Okay. Right? So they should be inert in inert inert relation of the NMR with the with the internal standard as compared to your sample. So meaning no no chemical uh, derivatization. All right. Okay. Uh, Doctor Nuhuda, do you have a question? She's typing or okay. All right. Um, is there any other question? I think she has typed something. Oh, she okay. answered. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Gurmit, I just yeah. want to uh, respond to that. If you are now using LCMS for quantitation, yeah. you better continue using it because it's much, much more sensitive than NMR and All it's right. better uh, quantitation than NMR. Okay. 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 Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we come to the end of the talk today. I think many of us benefited from the talk from Dr. Said Adnan today. Like I said, we'll have uh, short courses by Dr. Said Adnan very soon. We will come up with an announcement um, shortly. Thank you very much. Uh, till we meet again in our next uh, webinar. Um, take care. All right. Thank you, Dr. Thank Said you very Adnan. Much. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye.